A scent common to the homes, cafes and shopping malls of the UAE is the smoky perfume oud and it's been pivotal to the region's cultures for centuries, but it's now having to move with the times. To get the full picture, Inspire was given exclusive access to a major oud perfumer in the Middle East. If you've ever wondered what the smell of success is like, most Middle Eastern perfumers will give you the same answer. Well, the smell of success would obviously be Oud. The highly prized fragrance, characterized by its heady, musky notes, has been the cornerstone ingredient of traditional regional perfumes for thousands of years. Men wear the pure oil as cologne, whilst women commonly waft the exotic perfume through their hair and clothing through the wood chip incense version called Bahur. Three generations of Abdullah Ajman's family have lived and breathed the Oud business. People say about my father, they say Oud speaks to him. He's able to identify the different grades, the different qualities. I can fairly comfortably say that we're covered for a few generations. Abdullah is banking that Oud's popularity won't wane, despite cheaper synthetic commercial perfumes flooding the market. And extracting the dark resin Oud from Indian agarwood trees is a costly business for him, with a kilo of wood yielding just one milliliter of resin and a 12 milliliter bottle of high quality Oud perfume fetching around $3,000. To keep up with demand for the luxury product in the Middle East, Ashmal imports more than 40 tons of oud wood every year, and its manufacture is long and arduous. It is absolutely worth it because labor of love, that is the essence of it all. Perfumery industries, it's an apprentice style uh, professions, and you've got to be patient and you have to have the passion. Abdullah, I wish we had smell o vision because there's a fruity, smoky, peppery smell in the air, but no two noses are the same. So how do you interpret oud? We're both smelling the same thing, but some origins have the fruity aspects. Indian, for example, tends to be more earthy. Uh, Far Eastern versions tend to be more smoky. So these are the only subtle differences, but obviously for the customer, it makes a huge difference. Emiratis prefer more Indian origin notes, whereas Saudis prefer more what we call Cambodi, but typically it's more from the Far East. Oud smell can be affected by many factors, from the wood's origin to whether it's wild or cultivated, and even how long it's purified at high temperatures in pressurized vats. Famous global perfume houses have started to integrate oud into their ranges in order to target Middle East clients. And Emirati chemical engineer and perfume mogul Ali Al Jaberi, who manufactures his fragrances in France, believes this caters well to changing consumer tastes. He also points to local clients increasingly seeking out personalized fragrances from boutique producers with very limited production. Today, I guess niche perfumery is the trend worldwide, especially in this region, where uh, the growth is really dramatic and it's even attracting big companies to be part of it. Niche perfumery is like brands are dedicated to quality perfumes. Uh, they're really small, uh, they don't have a big budget, uh, but they're all about quality perfumes. Ali represents progressive perfumery and believes that infusing traditional local ingredients like oud with notes from afar is the way forward. I love vanilla. Vanilla blends very well with oriental fragrances. It's like the international sweet scent. You can never go wrong with it. Despite his designs on reinventing oud for the future, Ali will always be respectful of its past. Growing up in a culture where perfumes and incense and oils are a big part of it, um, I still remember when my mother used to burn frankincense in particular, especially in the afternoon. Uh, my grandmother loved oud oils, so she was using oud and that was the only thing she was using.